feel like going for a walk and talking about technology. Focus, 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 focus. There you go. It's not so hard to see when you just open your eyes. Technology. What is technology? What is the first kind of technology that humankind ever developed? It must have been human-powered technology. Something you could use with your hands. Sticks and stones and that sort of thing. And then we started building stuff, making arrows and you know, shaping rocks into axes. And then maybe somewhere around the same time we started developing language, uh, vocal language, no writing really. And once, once you develop written language, that technology allows you to develop so many other technologies. So that's when really uh, more advanced systems of uh, sticks and stones tied together can be created. You know, you can make boats and you, you can, you can uh, create huge walls to put around your city. You can do a lot of simple things to develop a functioning city. Okay, the first real mechanical technology, I suppose they had like wind-up clocks and whatnot in the Middle Ages. And then in the Industrial Revolution started steam power. And that was really uh, a step up. But steam power is still kind of clunky and slow and certainly not as dynamic and potentially as intelligent as elect electricity and electric technology. Um, the light bulb. You know, all of a sudden you don't need a candle to be up at night. You can light the city at night. So business can be, you know, going on as usual, even though it's it's dark and the sunset. You can still have artificial lighting. That is... Wow, what control over nature that man got over. It's like It's like getting fire you know it's just as much a, a change in our daily lives getting a light bulb or our, our nightly lives actually so that video you just watched um, I recorded it earlier tonight when I took a walk to the lake and when I got back as I was uploading it I started reading a blog that James had posted on Zads uh, James is JB Foyle on YouTube and it was all about subtle energy and in the blog James talked about how science's first real encounter with subtle energy was through electricity that's really only the beginning of the power of subtle energy and uh, he mentioned the the light bulb too and you know th there's so many connections between what I had talked about and what James wrote here. I'll post a link to this blog so you can see the synchronicities. And I don't quite understand how this works, but the fact that it's happening seems undeniable. Um, so that being said, uh, I'm going to continue to uh, catalog some materials, as as James has said. Uh, you'll understand if, if you read his little blog about... Uh, it's called a framework for the equations. And, you know, subtle energy is a type of technology, but I think it's different from the kinds of technology that we're used to science developing. Because typically, I mean, let's go back to the Industrial Revolution. All of the technology developed since that time has really been uh, a means to an end. In other words, it's a technology to produce something to produce products which are bought and sold um, and a subtle energy technology a spiritual science is not going to be a means to an end it's not going to be teleological in that sense it can't it won't work subtle energy will only manifest itself when the human being trying to apply the energies is being genuine and more deontological or um, fully present in the moment wishing that that moment is an end in itself or well, not wishing but actually um, experiencing that moment as an end in itself 
that is the only way that subtle energy will work. Love isn't something that you can use. So, one thing I read in, in James's blog that I was a little... The only thing that I noticed that I was a little hesitant about was this word engineering, saying that we have to learn to engineer subtle energy. When we consider that the science of subtle energy is based upon engineering objects, events, and endeavors to receive the maximum support possible from the universe, this principle will be very appealing to any sort of economy and business. So, see, I don't think we engineer anything with subtle energy. It's like saying you engineer the people you're close with with love. But that's not quite how it is. You're not in control of them. You are you are united with them. You are um, in a deeper relationship. It's not as though you're at the reins of anything. And we can never be at the reins of subtle energy. Subtle energy has its own mission and its own goal and we can't subvert that um, we can't use love bombs for hate and this is another difference I think we can see between spiritual technology and mechanistic technology a mechanistic technology most certainly can be used for evil and for hatred and for you know ingenuous uh, deceitful acts but a spiritual technology can't. You can't use subtle energy in destructive ways. It's simply a, it's a creative force and it can't destroy. In the earlier videos when I was walking to the lake I mentioned that the first technologies were most certainly human powered technologies because you know we didn't have the steam engine, we didn't have electricity. We had to make our technology work with the strength and energy of our own bodies and I think subtle energy is a lot like that. It's almost a, a return to the origin of technology because subtle energies are a power of, of the human being. And certainly we can um, pull these subtle energies out of people using technological mediums um, such as uh, video and music. The powers themselves are manifested by the sentient being by the consciousness and particularly with video when I speak out loud speech is is definitely a use of subtle energy the vibrations that are produced by my vocal cords and my tongue and my lips are very um, highly developed tools that allow me to manipulate the state of mind of those who hear me. Um, now, I could have written text and posted it, on Zazz at least, and contributed to this pod in that way, but I think when you write something, the author and the reader have this extra layer of separation between them that, you know, is useful for conceptualizing especially abstract ideas but for talking about and trying to understand and come to terms with subtle energy it, it seems like the best way to do that would be to directly confront it uh, by speaking about it and by trying to communicate with others about it vocally because you know the soul is synonymous with the voice in a lot of ancient traditions, and I think for good reason. Um, when we speak and are heard, there's a direct connection between people. So this kind of a medium, this video medium, is attractive both to the ego and to the soul. Because, you know, the ego loves to get comments and video responses from the people that watch this that say, yeah, man, right on, I agree with everything you say, and you're so wise, and, you know, it makes me feel good inside. But then my soul says, wait a minute, you should love everything and everyone, no matter what they say or what they think of your ideas. And so there's this struggle going on between my ego and my soul every time I turn this camera on, and it's great. I'm loving it.